What's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a super simple sourdough focaccia. We're gonna build our starter, we're gonna mix the dough by hand, and we're gonna make this beautiful focaccia bread. Now, this is a great recipe for starting out because you don't need a lot of special equipment, you don't really need a lot of special ingredients either, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. This is my first full length proper video in the new kitchen studio. So if there's a few mistakes or missteps in the video, please forgive me, but we're gonna grow and we're gonna get better with every video. If you wanna help me grow and see this channel grow, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. You can also ask me questions in the comments and I'll do my best to get back and answer every single one of you. Let's get started with our focaccia. For this focaccia recipe, we only need a few simple ingredients. We're gonna use fine semolina, some strong bread flour, oh, strong bakers. This has about 12.4% protein, sea salt, nice olive oil, and some ripe sourdough starter. If you don't have a sourdough starter already, head over to my blog. I've got a full guide on how you can make one. And in the coming weeks, I'm gonna drop a video on this channel here. So don't forget to subscribe and follow me. I've been getting tons of requests for these full length videos and I finally have the setup that I can produce some really good demonstrational sourdough baking and maybe a little bit of yeasted baking videos for you. I've weighed out all our ingredients and it's time to get started. We've got our bread flour, fine semolina, Salt, olive oil, ripe levain, and of course our water. Now I didn't weigh the water yet because I want to make sure that the temperature is right. I find if I weigh the water, especially when I'm filming something, by the time I go to pour it, the temperature drops a few degrees. So we're going to check the temperature real quick of our water. And we are at about 30 degrees Celsius. We're going to start measuring our water. And I'm gonna save about 10% of the water to help me mix in the salt. So what I like to do is we'll go weigh everything out. I'll leave the recipe in the description below. It's also gonna be posted on my blog. There's a link to that in the description as well. So I'm gonna weigh out my water. Now I'm gonna add the water to the levain. The levain is measured for this recipe, so I know I can use all of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this in here. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of water left over. This is going to help me remove the starter from the jar so I don't waste anything. I'll get in there, the water is going to allow it to release, and we'll just pour that in there. It's also going to sort of mix it up already for me. take my spatula and just mix this up a little bit. We're now going to add our flour, semolina and bread flour, and I'm going to hold off adding the salt and the olive oil because we're going to let this auto lease or technically fermento lease because we have the levain in there for about one hour. So I'm just going to start getting in there and I'm going to pinch through the loaf of bread to try and bring all the ingredients together. So we want to make sure that it's mixed together, no dry bits. We're going to use this little bit of water on my hands to scrape off any of that extra dough. And then I'm going to use the wet dough scraper to just scrape down the sides of my container. One hour covered to rest. We're going to set this for 60 minutes. While we're waiting for our dough to autolyze, I'm gonna show you really quickly how I prepare the starter for this recipe. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but we're just gonna do a simple overnight levain build. We're gonna need a scale, your starter jar, some water, I'm using room temp water, a spatula, and of course, your sourdough starter. Now I like to speed my starter when it's at its peak or when it's well risen. We're gonna place our jar on the scale. I'm gonna use slightly wet hands, just a little bit of water so that I can scoop this out. And we're gonna look for about 15 grams of starter in here. Now I don't like to go too 
crazy with the exact, it's 16 grams, that's enough for me for the time it's worth to take it out, put it back in. I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna add 100 grams of water and we're gonna add 100 grams of flour. I'm using the same strong bread flour that we're gonna use in our final recipe here. That's a little bit too much. You're gonna take your spatula, mix it up. Once you've got it mixed up, scrape down those sides. Throw a lid on it. And we're just gonna place this somewhere at room temperature. Now, depending on where you live, that might vary for you. I'm in Canada, it's snowing outside, we've got the heat on, and our house is about 21 to 22 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna place this up here, and we're gonna let that rise for 12 hours. Now you know how to prepare your starter, it's time to mix in the salt to our dough. As always, I like to scale my ingredients ahead of time. It saves you time, but it also saves making mistakes. Where I usually make the mistake is when I'm scaling, especially if my kids are around or I'm talking to someone all the time. So I'm gonna take my salt and I'm gonna sprinkle this on top of the dough. Next, I'm gonna add the water, the remainder of the water, and I'm gonna come in and start to pinch like a claw. And I'm gonna pinch through without going all the way through the dough. So you're gonna feel your hands squish through, but you're not gonna separate the dough. So we're gonna keep mixing this until it's all combined. You can see now, this hasn't fully come together yet, but we're just gonna keep working it till that salt and extra water is absorbed. Now that our salt's in, we're gonna let this sit and rest for 25 minutes before we mix in the olive oil. Now that our dough's been resting for half an hour, it's time to add the olive oil. You're gonna notice the dough is still a bit soft, but it has a noticeably better extensibility. You can stretch that dough right out. So we're gonna take this olive oil, drizzle it on top, and I'm just gonna get in there with my hand and start to mix that through. So I'm doing the same pinching motion. And we're just gonna keep folding that in until the oil's fully absorbed. Try, don't wanna waste that, a couple drops in there. And I'm just sort of like picking the dough up and folding it over on itself as I rotate the bowl with one hand and mix with the other. So we're just gonna knead this until it kind of comes together into a smooth ball. Should start to pull away from the sides. And when you pull that dough out, you can see it all sticks together. And that's good enough. Now we're gonna let this rest in bulk ferment for three hours at room temperature. In that three hours, we're gonna give this three folds. One hour, two hour, and then at the very third hour, right before it goes in the fridge. We are about one hour into the bulk fermentation and we're gonna fold our dough. We're gonna do that by putting a little bit of water on our hand, grab the dough and stretch it up, and just let it fall on top of itself. You wanna give it a good stretch and work yourself all the way around the bowl. I'll go around twice. Then we're gonna just pull the dough out and let it fall back into the container. Our dough has been bulk fermenting for two hours and it's time to do our second fold. So at this point, you should see that the dough sort of holds its shape a little bit better in the container, has some nice bubbling on top and it's starting to look a little bit smoother. We're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna put a little bit of water on our hand, reach in there, give it a good stretch up. And you can kind of take it out even if you want. Just let it ball back up into a nice ball. So for this time, we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna wet our hand a little bit and we're gonna take this dough and put it right onto the table. And we're gonna get a really good stretch here. Pull the top forward. 
Bring all the sides in and just round this off into a little ball. Like that, nice and tight. Now you can fold this in the container, but on the table it's easy to get that really good stretch. Once you're done, scoop it up and place it back in your container. Okay, you ready? Fold the dough, bring the top over to here. Grab it. Yep, now bring the bottom up. That's right. Flip it over. Okay, now round it into a ball. Remember, use your scraper. Round that off. Okay, grab the container. Grab the container. Okay, you hold the container and I'll put the dough in. Great. Now we're Now we're gonna put the lid on. Our focaccia dough is out of the fridge. I let this go overnight, it was about 12 hours, but don't worry too much about the exact time. If you go a little bit over 14, 15, 16, it's fine. I've even left this for 24 hours and it doesn't really make a difference. You're gonna slightly change the flavor, you're gonna change the fermentation, but ultimately this dough is so simple, it's gonna work either way. Now let's take this out and shape it into our container. So I am using a Lloyd pan here. I'll link this below. This works great for Detroit style pizza, but I found this to be a great focaccia pan. It generates heat really well. They bake really evenly. They're nonstick, great pan. If you don't have one of these, you can use a cast iron pan. You could use a baking pan, a baking dish, uh, anything like that. You can even use a little quarter sheet pan like this. Now these are pretty close to the same size if you look at it. So you know what? I've actually got two doughs today, so I'll make one in both so you can see the difference, all right? So our dough is gonna show signs of fermentation, obvious signs, there's bubbles on top. It looks really super nice. And we're gonna just plop this on the table. It should come out really easy without any help. You see how the bowl comes out clean? So with a dough scraper, we're gonna just pull this dough into a round ball. You should see if the dough is well developed, it doesn't stick to your table. You're gonna pull this into a round ball like this. Get it nice and tight. Like that, you'll see lots of air bubbles popping up there, just looking beautiful. We're gonna take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and just throw that into the pan. Give this a little bit of a grease, like that, okay. You don't want this to be too oily. I used to put a ton of oil in them, but I've realized lately it's better to put less. So it's shiny and oiled, but not greasy. Then we're gonna give it another quick round. We're gonna scoop this up and place it right in the middle. Now, this pre-shape is gonna allow it to have a little bit more structure, and we're gonna get a nicer crumb from the final product rather than just kind of flop it in there. So I'm actually just gonna Give this another round because I kind of put that in there sideways. I want to make sure that there's no tears on my dough. I'm not overdoing it. There we go. We're going to place that in there gently. I've got my second dough here. I'm going to do the same thing. I've already rounded this up. I'm just going to give it a light round shape. Make sure there's no tears. I like to keep it round. A little bit of oil on my hands. Make sure you got oil on the pan. Scoop it right up and place it into the bottom of your tray. Now, don't worry if they're perfectly in the center. We're gonna let these relax and shrink into the pan. After, we'll stretch them to give the final shape and we'll dimple them. Now that our dough's in the pan, we're gonna let them relax for about three hours. So it depends on your tension development in your pre-shape, your temperature, how well you did the day before, but it should be somewhere between three and four hours. Over that time, we're gonna allow the dough to relax in the pan, at about the one and a half hour mark, we're gonna lightly try to like get our fingers underneath and give it a little bit of stretching. Then we're gonna allow it to relax, we're gonna finally dimple it, and we're gonna bake them. So we're gonna leave these covered on the counter and leave it. If you've got a proofer, you can throw it in the proofer, that'll speed up the process. But I'm at home, we're just doing this in my kitchen, so we're just gonna leave it out. And if you've got a little helper with you, 
They can always come up and help you dimple the focaccia. What are we making? Focaccia. What's your favorite type of bread? Uh, uh, baguette. Baguettes? What? Should we make a baguette video? Yes. You want to make a baguette YouTube video? Uh. Okay. I'm going to set this timer for four hours. It's rested into the pan. It's full of bubbles. It's nicely fermented. You can see it doesn't quite fill the corners, but when we dimple it, it's going to fill it out. We're going to use some olive oil and some coarse molded salt. Now you can top this with whatever. Some sauteed onions, olives, cherry tomatoes, get creative. Za'atar, any kind of spices, oregano. We're going we're gonna to drizzle this olive oil on here, all over. Not too much, but enough to coat. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit on my fingers so they don't stick to the dough. Now we're gonna dimple the focaccia. So we wanna press all the way down to the bottom and just let it go. So I'm pressing all the way and touching the bottom of the pan. We don't wanna overdo it and degas the dough, but you should see nice bubbles coming up when you press into the dough now. Do this one while I'm here. We're gonna finish this with some Malden salt. Make sure you sprinkle that from high up so you get a good even coating. If you don't have Malden salt, any fleur de sel, coarse flaky salt, whatever. If you don't have that, sea salt, kosher salt, but that's not ideal. You want those like salt crunches on top. I've preheated my oven to 450. Now I'm using a convection oven, so it's gonna cook extra fast, and it's gonna take about 20 minutes. If you have an oven that has bottom heat, like a gas oven, you might wanna put it on a tray, or put another tray underneath it to sort of diffuse that bottom heat and prevent it from burning. So let's throw this in the oven and let it bake. Focaccia is done. It looks and smells amazing. See the nice golden brown? Look at that. We're just going to use a little spatula. And we're going to slide it onto a cooling rack. We're going to let this cool properly before we slice it open and take a look at the crumb. 